remind my viewers that HLN and CNN cannot confirm nor deny what you're alleging here. It's pretty heavy stuff. Yes, you're it suggesting. is. Um, now, we saw Pat on the Oprah interview, though, suggesting that Whitney did not do drugs and Gary saying the same thing, right? I mean, that they, do you think it's possible they had no knowledge that she was using at this time? Well, no, I doubt that very much. I doubt that very much. Pat, Pat is around her. She's around her enough to know if she was doing drugs or not. I don't believe that. I really don't. And I'm, I'm just being honest. I, I if I was around her, I would know. You would know. And, and I see that you're angry. Yes, I am. Uh, and you're sad, too, right? Yes, I mean, I am. this is really a sad... I'm very sad. I'm sure. very sad, and I'm very angry. Now, let me tell you something. I saw an interview the other day. I'm going I'm to play it here. Where Pat tells a total different story from the actual police report. Now, remember, I went through the whole police report, right? They said it was a hairdresser in the room. The hairdresser went in there to check on Whitney. And uh she uh she's I, i'll pull it back up i'll pull it back up then they said that they they went to neiman marcus and um uh, but pat says oh she had to go and run some errands and some other stuff like her story don't ma match up to the police report right let me show you. I think Pat is suspect. I think she talked to Oprah. Yeah, it is over. I think this is it. I'm still under fair use here. I think this might be it. I, the handwriting was kind of on the wall. I would be kidding myself. Now, where's the part where they told Whitney, oh, um, go take a bath. Y'all remember that? Go take a bath. Let me pull it up. Let me pull it up. Now look, let me put it on the screen real quick. Right now look, the descendant checked in the Beverly Hilton Hotel on Monday, uh, February 6th. She was here for the Grammy Award ceremony on Sunday. And there was a pre-Grammy party at the hotel on Saturday, February 11th, the descendant was last seen alive. Now, here you go. The descendant was last seen alive by her assistant. That's who Pat said went with her to the mall. On Saturday, between 3, 3.45 and 4 o'clock, right? That's the last time they saw Whitney. The 
They said Whitney complained of having a sore throat and had been that had been lingering for a few for the few past days. Before she left, the, the assistant said before she left that um to go she before uh wait before she left, she told the descendant to go take a bath to start getting ready for tonight. Now, for somebody to go take a bath at 345. The four o'clock to get ready for tonight is kind of early, just in my opinion. You know what I'm saying? Because we know that party was a late night party. Before she told, before she left, she told the descendant to go take a bath to start getting ready for tonight. The person who assisted then left to go pick up items at Neiman Marcus. So that would be Pat and her went together to go to Neiman Marcus, right? The personal assistant left Neiman Marcus at 425, right? Or is that 325? 325? And uh and per the and per the door key, she entered the descendant locked room at 336. Now remember, they saying the hairdressers in there. And the bodyguard is in there with her, right? But when you look at Whitney's food, she got a burger and a turkey sandwich. So she wasn't eating both uh, dinners. She went into the bathroom and she found the descendant laying face down in the tub. Now the assistant supposed that I went into the bathroom and found uh, Whitney laying face down in the tub. Now I fell asleep and slipped up under the water. Face down. Why would she be face down in that little ass tub, right? She went into the bathroom, found the descending laying face down in the tub, unresponsive, with the top of her, with the top of her head facing west. The bathroom was filled with water, and there was water on the bathroom floor. However, the water was not running. She called out to the bodyguard, the assistant called out to their bodyguard. And they pulled the descendant out of the bathtub. The assistant then called downstairs telling them to call 911. Right? They received the 911 call at 343. And the paramedics from the Beverly Hills Fire Department arrived on the scene. On Saturday, February 11th at 346, Paramedics from Rescue One determined the death. Or at uh, on Saturday, eleven February eleventh, at what nine thirty five, the water to the water temperature in the bathtub was still ninety three point five degrees, and they they say there are no sounds of foul play, whatever, right? Now, y'all y'all hear this story, right? This is the statement they got. Now listen to her story. First fuck up right there. That's a major fuck up right there. She said the goddamn hairdresser was in the lobby and she told the hairdresser to wait right there. Mary was going to go upstairs and check on Whitney, right? Watch this in the paperwork. The hairdresser is the one that said they got her out the fucking tub. Watch. I told y'all when he got murdered. Watch. Where's the police report?
Okay, here you go. Where is it? Hold on. Wait a minute. Let me see. Is it in his statement here? Wait a minute, where is it? Is it at the top? Because they, they, they tell you. It tells you how they got her out, who found her. Hold on. Hold on here. Watch. Oh, here it go. Uh, according to the reported information, the descendant is a 48-year-old black woman with a medical history of narcotic substance abuse. The descendant was last seen alive uh, between whatever times by the, her personal assistant. The descendant complained of having a sore throat, but she had been complaining that for that for the past few days. The assistant told the descendant to take a bath and start getting ready for the night. The assistant then left the room to run some errands. At a primarily... 1535, the assistant returned and used her key into the lock secure room. Once inside, she found the descendant laying face down in the tub filled with water. Unresponsive, the assistant called her bodyguard, and together they pulled the descendant out of the, the bathtub. The assistant called downstairs to 911. 911 was called and 1543 and officers from the Beverly Hills Police Department, paramedics from the Beverly Hills Fire Department arrived on the scene. On Saturday, uh, on Saturday, February 11th, Rescue One determined to detect, determined to death, the descendant possibly overdosed on a narcotic substance, prescribed medications over the counter medications and alcohol. Minor external trauma was noted, and there was no signs of foul play. Detective Hyon requires a two-hour notification prior to the examination. Please see case notes for uh, FOT, his contact information. Where is the... I know they said that hairdresser was in that room. The girl said she was getting ready to go do Whitney hair or some shit. Hold on. Prior to my arrival, the descendant was removed from the bathtub by a personal assistant and the bodyguard. And the paramedics placed the descendant onto the living room floor in order to render the first aid. Also prior to my arrival, paramedics removed the couch from out of the living room and placed it in, on the patio in order to render first aid on the descendant. The descendant's purse was on the couch and the descendant California driver's license had been removed from the wallet, which was inside the purse prior to my arrival. Also prior to my arrival, the majority of the descendant prescription medical 
medication bottles had been removed from a brown bag that was on top of the table in the southwest corner of the living room and then placed on top of that same table. Uh, after completing my investigation, I changed this from a natural versus accident, a natural versus accident to an accident. The descendant possibly overdose on a narcotic substance, prescription medication, over-the-counter medication, and alcohol. Minor trauma was noted, and there are no sounds of foul play. It's somewhere in here. Somebody tells a story when they say the hairdresser was in the room and she went to go check on Whitney to see if she was ready to get her hair done. Where's that? Hold on. Tell you. All right, let, let, let's let me go finish letting uh Pat tell her story. I'm gonna find it though. How did is this did how are people screaming? Right? Where and then this lady said she somebody screamed, this woman came out. Where are these witnesses at? Where are these witnesses at? And then she told the hairdresser to wait downstairs, right? But she goes upstairs, her and Mary go upstairs. She tells her hairdresser to wait downstairs. But the hairdresser, she sees the hairdresser in the hallway. And she told the hairdresser to wait downstairs, right? Am I tripping? Let me know if I'm tripping. She told the hairdresser to wait downstairs, but the hairdresser beat her upstairs for her to see the hairdresser. So walk me through it. You're going to go to your room? No, I wasn't going to my room. So a woman comes out her room. All you seen was this woman drop down to her knees. You, you just seen this woman drop to her knees, right? You don't know nothing yet. Somebody come out the room. Anything wrong? Call 911. For what? What am I telling 911? What do you want me to call 911 for? What happened for for me to call 911? What do you know already, Pat? For you to tell somebody to call 911. What am I telling 911 when I call them? You don't even know what the fuck happened yet. You're like, bro, this shit looks suspect. This look so sorry. So your her brother was in there the whole time, then I'm assume, right? If her brother was in there, man, this shit is suspect, bro.
None of that adds up, bro. I'm sorry. That don't add up to the police to police report. I'm sorry, man. All right, we got to go back to one thing. Whitney Houston. We talked about this before, but Whitney is a one of a kind that you would never ever find Whitney again. She in heaven, but there's never another Whitney. And when it really came down to it, Whitney was as ghetto, gangster, wild as possible. When Bobby Brown got kidnapped and, and he owed some people some money for doing the drugs, he called Whitney. Whitney showed up with 450,000 cash by herself to trade that money to get Bobby Brown back. 
I mean, to do that. I remember we was on a plane coming from New York, and Chili was coming back to LA with me from New York. So we sitting there. When he come, Chili, Chili, she like, hey, sit in front of Chili. Chili, if you gonna be in this, be careful. She got herpes. And Chili, if you gonna be riding around with this mother out there, you better have a vest because you might get in a shootout or a drive-by. And they start laughing, right? I'm like, damn, that's gangster. I remember it was when we was at the Soul Train and won those awards and Pac was there. And she was telling Bobby, go take pictures of him. I want a lot of pictures of him. She know Bobby probably couldn't handle the fact that if Whitney would have been taking pictures of Pac. So she said, this mother take the pictures of Pac. Because she was kept telling Pac, I asked him, he look, how good he looked, and so on and so on. That's gangster. Now, you know, I'm not going to say to mention another person's name. It was a young man who had met Whitney before Whitney passed away. He was in that room and Whitney was complaining. I got this little room. I got a closet big in this room. So Clyde Davis didn't give it a big sweep like he should have. He gave us some wood. You know? Then she was complaining about the fact that Somebody's little brother burned her drugs and she getting high with him. And she knows shit is bad because she's kissing on so-and-so little brother. She didn't even say his name. They got high. She dies. But nobody, it's not a Whitney Houston award. Not a Tina Marie award. This is my assumption with all that I saw and researched in this Whitney Houston shit. I believe that Whitney Houston was clean up into that package that she got high with, she relapsed with. I believe she was clean. I believe that allegedly, uh, the people that will benefit from her death the most, whether it be the Clive Davises or the label or whatever, allegedly got people close to her to allegedly convince her to try drugs or do drugs to get high and they knew it was a bad batch. And I believe that they they did that. They carried it out when she died and overdosed on it. They went and ran the water and threw her in the tub to make it look like she drowned opposed to just having a drug overdose. So they used the, the, the tub. Because look, like Shook said, first of all, why is Whitney in the regular room? And she in the regular room and she getting in the fucking tub. I'm I don't take a bath in a regular tub in the in the in a hotel. Fuck it, I was just in Cancun and had the, the fucking big double big jacuzzi shit. And I still wasn't even getting in that shit. You know how I many people been in that shit? Like it ain't like you got chlorine and all that, like a pool or or jacuzzi or something. That shit's a, a, a hot tub and shit. I'm not getting in that shit, right? So I doubt a diva's getting in there. And then why would she be in there upside down? That's not even, that tub ain't even big enough for you to fall asleep, slip in and, and roll over. Like it ain't even enough water in there for you to just turn over and be upside down and you all beat up in the face and everything else. Skin slippage, everything. So my assessment is this. Whitney definitely was not in the fucking room by herself. That's bullshit. It was a few people in that room where, again, uh, her food explains 
that there was somebody else in there eating with her, right? 